All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I would like to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakak Badash. All right, double honors to the elders and apostles of our great millstone, who were the true elders and apostles of our all Israel. This is Brother Yahweh Shai with another lesson. All right, and the title of this lesson is going to be His Light Will Be Put Up. All right, because as you can see from the title of this article, it says Idaho elementary students are being taught porn literacy, how to hide pornography consumption from parents. All right, and pretty much what this article is going into is the fact that these uh, elementary uh, school like board teachers want to teach your children about porn, man. All right. And so as you get into the article, I'm just going to read these first two um, paragraphs. It says the Idaho state government is encouraging K through 12 minors to consume pornography without any shame. Even though it is illegal for adults to show children under the age of 18 pornographic material, the Idaho Department of Health and Welfare is reportedly purchasing so-called porn literacy materials from Education, Training, and Research, a nonprofit progressive organization, all right, which a child all right, should not be worrying about that type of stuff, man. A child should not be worrying about sex or having sex or even watching it, man. All right, that's not what a child should be should be doing during the ages between kindergarten and the twelfth grade, man. All right, they should be worrying about how to serve the Lord. All right, how to to be forgiven, man. They should be learning about the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father, especially if they're if they're an Israelite. All right, which is a so-called Negro, Latino, or North American Indian, man. All right, and this the, this is the type of stuff that Esau wants to push upon this world because he understands that if he can separate uh the uh the most high from us completely then he's one but the lord said that is is going to pretty much it's impossible for that for that to do it i romans 8 all right and so you can really read uh uh read the rest of this article on your own which i'll post a link in the description but uh what i really wanted to get into was this video all right because she this edomite she expounds more about what she's wanting to do all right, and uh, after that, I'm gonna go ahead and get a few few precepts. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this. We can go. promote a shame free educational space by letting young people know that it's okay if they are curious, it's okay if they have watched porn, and it's okay if they have thought about porn. Which I a child shouldn't. Once again, a child should not be thinking about porn, man. That that shouldn't be what their <laughs> daily objective is, is to learn about sexual intercourse, man. All right, it's not okay for a child to watch porn. That's that's not okay. All right, and listen to the way that this sheet of might words the sentences, man. All right. I always make sure to say someone being curious about sex and or porn does not make them a bad person. It makes them human. It's so important we normalize that this is a natural human experience. And I also want to point, uh, make a point to share that not wanting to watch porn is also completely fine. There is no judgment and shame for not being curious. That's okay, too. And we want to create environments in the classroom where students don't shame each other. So as an educator, my job is to provide information about sexual health and have students critically think by exploring all sides of an issue. Critical thinking skills are the largest component of porn literacy. It's the ability for young people to analyze and ask questions about the media that they're viewing. Critical thinking skills allow young people to understand the intention behind pornography. So much of sex education is reflecting on our values and beliefs in relation to a topic, and porn literacy is no exception. For facilitators, it's first important for them to reflect on their reasons for wanting to teach porn literacy. Do they want to teach porn literacy because they believe watching porn and by extension sex work is inherently bad and they want to stop young people from accessing it? That's unfortunately. So basically what she's saying is it's OK to be a prostitute and to flaunt it, man. All right. So and if you were listening to the way that she was wording these sentences, man, she was pretty much saying it's OK. Uh, for example, one of the sentences she had said was it's OK to be curious about sex and or porn, you know, and you with with a person with a. Uh, a very average IQ or thinking level, that would be something that flies right over the head. Like, mm, well, yeah, I mean, sex isn't a natural part of life, but wasn't what isn't natural is showing these uh, sexual acts to children. What isn't natural is to say it's to call it education by showing them the the act, man. All right, because she is correct in the sense that, you know, everyone gets curious about sex, but they don't they shouldn't start getting curious until they come of the proper age. All right. The you shouldn't be worrying about that type of stuff. No child should be doing any of that. But through the wickedness of Esau, 
you know, since he's in rulership, you're seeing that this is the type of agenda that eventually comes out. All right. Because this is this is nothing new, man. They, they get this. They serve. They do these things because they serve the goddess Ishtar, which the goddess Ishtar was the goddess of uh, fertility and love. So I'll go ahead and get that real quick just to show you guys. All right. So the goddess Ishtar, it says a multifaceted uh, goddess Ishtar takes three paramount forms. She is the goddess of love and sexuality and thus fertility. She is responsible for all life, but she is never a mother goddess as a goddess of war. She is often shown winged and bearing arms. And what do you usually see uh, wings and with, like with arms and wings? You usually see like a little angel baby with that uh, with that that bow and arrow, man. You know, and so, you know, it says uh, what my mythology is Ishtar is a uh, ancient Meso Mesopotamian goddess of love, war and fertility. All right. She is associated with beauty, sex, divine justice and political power. She was originally worshipped in Sumer uh, under the name Ain uh, Inanna and later by the Akkadians, Babylonians and Assyrians under the name Ishtar. All right. So this isn't nothing new. This has been happening. But now that you have the Internet, also known as unicorn in the scriptures, now that you have the Internet, it's pushed even more. All right. And uh, there was this uh, one comedian that I had watched um, a few years back. And what he had said was that um, when he lived in his home country, he never was uh, aroused as much as he was as as he was in America, because that's the type of stuff you see everywhere. You have you have a. a men's clubs i'll call them you have men clubs all right with exotic dancers man you have this type of stuff they're trying to teach your children about porn all right you have the internet that you can access that type of stuff through but the lord said we're supposed to abstain from all of that man the lord said that we shouldn't we are not to take part in any of that all right and so real quick i want to go ahead and get to uh want to get a few precepts all right and the first precept that i'm going to go ahead and start off with is going to be the book of Psalms chapter 28 and verse 4. All right. So it says, I'm going to go ahead and start at verse. I'm going to start at verse 2. Psalms 28 and 2. Hear the voice of my supplications when I cry unto thee, when I lift up my hands toward thy holy oracle. Draw me not away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity, which speak peace to their neighbors, but mischief is in their hearts. So as as you can see, all right, he as she, that she was saying, you know, she was saying uh, that they wanted to show porn unto these children uh, under the name of education. All right. Oh, well, you know, we're doing it for educational purposes. All right. But the, if you if you uh, do some research, the way that porn even came into existence in the first place was by acts of wickedness man all right and so it says which speak peace to their neighbors so oh yeah we're doing this in the in the name of education but really but mischief is in their hearts they're doing it so they can ultimately spread this agenda and ruin the innocence of children that way they can force their wickedness upon everybody else man that because esau is the accuser of our brethren so he wants a reason to point and play the victim. Well, they were doing it too. That's the type of spirit that Esau's in. All right. So it says, verse four, give them according to their deeds and according to the wickedness of their end devourers, give them after the work of their hands, render to them their desert. That's right. So according to their wicked deeds and according to their works, which th this is part of their works. All right. Uh, King David is saying, give them according to the wickedness of their end devourers, which let's get into that word. And uh, I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing it wrong. So like you, I'm butchering that word. All right. But this is uh, I'm going to go ahead and get it in the B.O.B. All right. That word in 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 divers. All right. Says deed practice and deeds acts, you know, pretty much the same thing. Just uh, worded differently, you know, so the, so the Lord is going to reward them according to their work, to the to the work of their hands all right the same way he's going to reward the work of the hands of the elect he's going also going to reward the wicked for the work of their hands which they're sowing unto themselves uh wickedness all right and judgment harsh judgment all right as to where the elect are sowing unto themselves righteousness all right and mercy because they're abstaining from these acts they're abstaining from these type of things as we were commanded to do all right and so from there i want to go ahead and jump into the book of ephesians 
chapter 5 and verse 1. It says, Be ye therefore followers of Yahweh as dear children. That's right, because once again, being a child, when you're when you're that's the time when you're really soaking everything in, you're really learning, all right, how everything in the world works, all right, the, the decisions you make, you're learning from your mistakes, and so on and so forth. All right, and at the same time, you're being taught, you're being raised by who? By usually your parents, all right, and uh or some type of guardian. But you're not supposed to be being raised, all right, and being showed porn, man. All right, that's not how it's supposed to be. You're supposed to follow the Most High, which what does the Most High want you to learn? Is the law, statutes, and commandments, and ultimately how to please Him, because that's ultimately the way of life, all right. And whenever you draw yourself unto the Heavenly Father and your followers of Him, all right, you will have a long, satisfying life. But first, you have to abstain from these things. All right, so continue in Ephesians 5 and 2, and walk in love as Hamashiach also both loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to Yahweh for a sweet smelling Savior. That's right, because through Yahweh Shai are we able to be forgiven, forgiven of our sins. All right, if it weren't for that act, we wouldn't be here. <laughs> all right, and it says verse 3, which is the point, but fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you. As become as saints. That's right. So as you're you're making yourself white and uh, making your robes white in the blood of the Lamb, you're supposed to abstain from these things. And that that first one was fornication, which whenever you get into that word fornication, all right, in the Greek it's porneia, all right, which means illicit sexual intercourse. Which let's get into that word illicit as well. Illicit definition. All right, evoke or draw out. All right, uh, draw forth something that is latent or potential into existence. That's right, illicit sexual intercourse. You're not supposed to be doing any of that. You're supposed to refrain from that. All right, and by Esau trying to push that agenda, all right, he's trying to stop this first part from happening. All right, that way the rest of that carnality and that lust of the flesh will be easier for him to manipulate upon these people. All right, because that's what that's the type of stuff that he's. Um, doing that's the type of education that he wants his people to be raised up in wickedness all right he's truly the devil all right but the lord said fret not thyself because of because of these evildoers all right so from there let's go ahead and end it off on this it's gonna be the book of psalms all right chapter 37 and verse 1 it says fret not thyself because of evildoers neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity and whenever you get into that word fret all right in the hebrew it's a uh, Hara, all right, and means it means to be hot, furious, burn, become angry, be kindled. That's right. Uh, don't don't let it burn or or don't be angry. Don't let it kindle. All right, because of evildoers, because this is something that was prophesied to happen. All right, these are things that were already made known unto us. All right, so we have the understanding that these things have to happen in order for us to obtain the kingdom. And we're going to get our revenge. We just have to wait on the Heavenly Father, Zephaniah 1 and 8. All right, and it says, verse 2, For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. That's right, because they're sowing unto themselves wickedness, man. So they're going to pay for it. You know, even though the Lord is long-suffering, He's doing it so that way the balances in the heavens can balance out. The wickedness will balance out to an eternity of righteousness. All right. But first, that, that wickedness has to has to settle. Okay. So it says, verse 3, Trust in Yahweh and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily shalt thou be fed. Thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in Yahweh, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. So when you delight yourself in the Lord, all right, and if you train up your child to the to the to delight themselves in the uh, in the Lord, all right, then they're going to be living a prosperous life as well, as well as you, because you're going to be wa walking in the ways of life and not the ways of death, all right, because what Esau pushes is the way of death, all right, and this this um this thing of, with uh the school elementary schools wanting to show children porn that's just the that's that's just the start. It's going to continue to wax worse. And worse, man. All right. So it says, verse five, commit thy way unto Yahweh. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as a light and thy judgment as the noonday. That's right. So when you commit yourself unto the Lord, he will bring all that he has said to pass, both the 
judgment on the wicked and the mercy of the righteous. All right. So you you can't have one without the other. All right. You can't eat this roll and just taste the honey and not also know about the bitter, which this is very bitter. All right. Knowing that your your children uh, could be their innocence can be destroyed. You know, knowing that you still put yourself in the hands of the heavenly father and trust in him. All right. And so it says, verse seven, rest in Yahweh and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, which Esau, you know, he he might accomplish this, man. All right. He might he might bring to pass schools showing your children poor. All right. But we still have to be patient with the heavenly father and not fret not ourselves. All right. Don't let the, the sun go down on your wrath. All right. But instead, place that anger into into the work of your hands, which is going to be this ministry. All right. That way, whenever the Lord comes back. All right. Whenever your house comes back and cracks some clouds open, you'll get a crown of of, of uh, eternity. All right. A crown of eternal life, should I say. All right. And then you're going to come back and slay the wicked. This is the patience and the faith of the saints. All right. We're wait. We're waiting for our time. So you have to fret not yourself because of him who prospereth in his ways, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. That's right. So we have to cease from this anger. We have to continue to trust in the heavenly Father and believe that He is all right, and He will He will He will bring it to pass the judgment and the the blessing. All right, the judgment on Esau, the so-called white man, all right, for the agendas that he wants to to push and the wickedness that he spread upon the planet Earth. All right, and the mercy upon the elect and that one third of the nation of Israel, the so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans for their sacrifices and the denial of themselves to strengthen their spirits through the heavenly father, whose name is Yahweh and his son, whose name is Yahweh Shai. All right. And so with that being said, I pray this, that this lesson was edifying. And once again, I want to give all praises, honor and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakaqadash. All right, double honors to the elders and apostles of a great millstone who are the true elders and apostles of all Israel. And to the next time I say, Shalom.